Hi friends, today I want to discuss how the Catholic concept of purgatory operates as a mechanism for love, both God's and our own. Now the reason I want to do this video is because purgatory is among the most widely misrepresented beliefs in the Catholic world, and I think the fault is pretty evenly distributed among Catholics and non-Catholics alike. By revisiting it now, I hope to shed some light on what remains a controversial dividing line. So let's dive in. In Christian tradition, love takes center stage. It is easy to dismiss this role as a mere guiding principle or abstract theory, but that would do love and us a disservice. In reality, love permeates the entirety of the Catholic faith. Put another way, love is our core purpose because God is our creator, and he is a God who not only displays but embodies love. Viewed through this lens, purgatory becomes not only a fitting final purification, but a sacred mechanism for cultivating love, quote, an activity of reciprocal caring, end quote. That's from Ratzinger. The importance of love in purgatory and more broadly speaking cannot be overstated. It is the foundational element that informs and shapes all aspects of Catholic life. Love is not an abstract theory, but an essential relationship that binds the Christian body together. At the heart of this understanding is the belief that God is love. God created the world out of love, and all of creation is imbued with the divine love that sustains it. This love is made manifest in the person of Jesus Christ. Through his teachings, his life, and his sacrifice on the cross, Jesus tangibly demonstrated the boundless love of God for humanity. When reflecting on the nature of God and his salvation plan, love emerges not only as the source and the end of the Catholic faith, but also as the author and the subject. By loving God and serving others, Christians fulfill their calling, drawing closer to God in the process. To love without fail is to grow in holiness. This pursuit stands in opposition to sin, which is the privation of goodness. After all, a life full of love has no room left for sin. Pondering the intersection of God's love and our sin points us back to one of the most profound demonstrations of love in the Catholic faith, that is purgatory. While many people view purgatory only as a process of punishment and painful purification, it is much more so a sacred mechanism for demonstrating God's love for us while perfecting our own love for him in accordance with the new covenant found in Christ Jesus. Purgatory purifies Christians of their lingering attachments to sin, freeing them to love without restraint. It is not a place of despair, but of hope as, quote, souls in purgatory do not consider that punishment as suffering for content in God's will. They are one with him in pure charity, end quote. Uh, Catherine of Genoa. God doesn't just promise to redeem us. He offers a practical way to achieve the perfection that we seek. Purgatory is an assurance of God's love. Through purgation, Catholics transform more fully into the image of Christ, the human embodiment of divine love. This transformation, as we know, is not a one-time event, but a lifelong development. In that sense, purgatory has already begun. By allowing ourselves to be purified by God's love in this life and the next, we become more loving as we become more like Christ. In purgatory, we shed our former selves as we approach our Savior, unable to withstand the glory before us. Purgatory, far from being a place of torture, is an expression of love, both God's love for us and ours for him. Now, when it comes to purgatory, misconceptions and dramatic reimaginings abound. So I think we should all work on grounding our concept of purgatory in this sacrificial love of Christ and in the purifying process that we undergo on our own paths to theosis, that is, on our own paths to becoming more and more conformed to the image of Christ, whether that be in this life or in the next. So thank you for watching. For those who are interested, I have included a list of my work cited in the description. Uh, I based this video essay off of a paper that I wrote uh, for my grad program at Notre Dame, and I included largely the Gospels of John and Matthew, as well as uh, Pope Benedict XVI's eschatology, Pope Paul VI Lumen Gentium, and St. Catherine of Genoa's Purgation and Purgatory. So again, I'll include all of those and a couple more in the description. If you enjoyed this and got value out of it, please subscribe and like and share it with your friends. It really does help more than you know. 
And please don't forget to tune in to my upcoming interview on Monday with Dom of the Logos Project. And that starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time on October 2nd. So if you're watching this after that, uh, you'll already be able to find it under my live section. Thank you again for watching and take care.